Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Football Development and Coaching Marjon Live online talk. Um, we are joined here today with Phil Brown, who's our programme lead, and Lee Ballard, who's also a lecturer on the programme. Uh, we've got one of our student ambassadors as well with us today, Josh, and he'll be able to share any experiences from a student point of view. Um, the Q&A is open, so please um, submit your questions throughout the talk and we will answer those at the end. Um, Phil, I'm just going to hand over to you if that's OK. Yeah, perfect. Thanks. Uh, thanks for anyone who is joining us live and anyone who's watching this back on, on the recording. Um, welcome to the, the live talk. So I'm going to speak about the BA football development and coaching degree, how that looks at Marjon, uh, how we work together with our students and our partners, aiming to get you where you need to be in terms of your career um, during your time with us and then when you leave. Um, just so you've got a sense of, of who's who. So I'm on the call, I'm on the top left, I'm Phil, and then Lee Ballard is the guy on the right in the in the uh, FA uh, coach education um, tracksuit. Um, and then some of the other people are members of the team. So we've got a, a wide variety um, of lecturers with uh, sport, football and football coaching backgrounds. So you get to see lots of different people um, and you also get to to be taught on the programme by our education partners and our football club partner. So that's Argyle Community Trust um, and Devon FA. So we're in a really fortunate position where we work uh, th through a partnership both with uh, the FA so at county level. So that's with Chris French um, and also we work with Argyle Community Trust, which are the charitable arm of Argo um, Professional Football Club and we are also uh, as a university um, part of the England Women's High Performance Football Centre so we've got a real kind of agenda in terms of the the female workforce and the, the female uh, talent pathway for for footballers um, at, at the university so this is all kind of in, integral and embedded into the programme so it's not kind of a bolt-on where you might get to meet some of these people occasionally uh, our high performance officer is a lady called Tash Mills and she works um, up at Marjons. Um, she's been doing lots of kind of mentoring CPD events um, with our coaches um, on the degree. Um, and then we've got our connection with Plymouth Argyle uh, Community Trust as I'll talk about as I, as I progress through the programme. Um, and I'll share some of our experiences of our graduates who work with them alongside the degree and also those that have got employment with them when they finished. In terms of the programme, we know that lots of students come to us um, and lots of people come to us with the focus of football coaching. So it's a football development and coaching degree uh, and coaching is clearly integral to that. It's what probably we're all missing at the minute in terms of the COVID situation, live football to finish, whether that's grassroots or whether it's Premier League. Uh, we've got all the social distancing and we've kind of seen how integral um, to our lives that, that football really is. It's more than just a game as part of our kind of national culture and national identity. So lots of lots of students come to us saying that they want to coach um, and we understand that. So I'll talk about the coach education pathway within that. But it's really important that people recognise that the football industry is much bigger than just being a football coach. Um, so we take a broad view um, to give you plenty of opportunity to develop um, in terms of your own academic education, but also your applied education. So we talk about football in terms of uh, grassroots to elite. So the performance pyramid uh, is wider at the bottom because there's more activity at the bottom than it is at the top. But we tend to focus at the high performance end um, or certainly things like Sky Sports do. Um, so we talk about the, the player pathway and that and that pyramid. Um, there's a lot of management that goes into this. So think about any football club um, to, hap to happen on a match day. There's lots of people that are behind the scenes to make these things happen, whether it's in HR, whether it's in finance, whether it's in marketing, uh, whether it's in event management. So we talk about some management activities. Um, we also explore the role of football uh, for a power for good in wider society, which I'll talk about in a little bit of detail in a minute. And we also focus on inclusion. So the fact that we've got a high performance centre for females and not for males, that's because there's inequality in the professional game um, all the way through to grassroots and in terms of the number of females that are coaching the game. So we've got an inclusion issue there that's female based, but we've got lots of other issues of inclusion, whether it's disability, um, whether it's those those other types of things. So we take a, a view of inclusion because if football's for everybody, then everybody needs to be included. Um, and then we've got event management. So you, you'll be running football events in the second year um, and lots of hands on experience. So the degree kind of captures 
um, all of those elements um, as you progress through it with the with the three years. I mentioned the the football pathway just a minute ago. Uh, the guy at the top of that path, uh, pyramid to, uh, needs no introduction, but the people through the rest of the the pathway possibly do. So we talk about football development in terms of how we how we start our journeys at the foundation phase where everybody first kicked a ball for the first time. Some people then progress to participation, whether that's grassroots football, uh, whether that's school based programs, whether that's the a community trust or a professional football club doing um, grassroots coaching activity. Um, and then some people that have got talent move into performance programs uh, that might be in independent football academies, that might be football academies or centres of excellence tied into professional football clubs. It could be pathways through, through England performance. And then very, very few people make it to the stage of excellence at the very top of that pyramid, whether that's as a coach or whether that's as, as a player. But we've got a huge workforce that works all the way through that. And the pyramid is wider at the bottom, meaning there's more people doing that activity and it narrows as we get towards the top. So we can think about how players go through that, that journey or how, how a coach might. We also take a really uh, strong view on the programme of how football is used for wider benefits. Um, so working with the community trust, we think about how the um, football might be used. So that's a picture of Argyle's uh, walking football team where, where they uh, were a group of men that were um, out, out of shape, retired, old, maybe socially a bit more isolated and the power of football brought them back together. Um, and they went on to win uh, the first FA Cup. Um, and we use football often for inclusion, so it could be wider society issues. So the, the mental well-being, the physical well-being agenda has been kind of really brought home when we've all been on lockdown, but also about how for, for a state based projects, through projects like Premier League Kicks, it's used for kind of drugs, alcohol um, and also training skills and employment interventions. So football is used, harnessed as a power for good in society as well as just being the game that people love and to make that happen we need to have a, a workforce behind the scenes and being out there on the, on the football pitches and the and the three g's doing the work so a football development practitioner needs to have good personal skills they need to understand the bigger picture that they're working with understand the sports landscape um, they might not also always be the person taking all the accolades um, but they're the, pe the people making it happen. Now, some of the work that you do will be hidden and, and won't be seen. Some of the work that you do might be very high profile in terms of coaching when it's uh, hands on on the pitch. In terms of some of the pathways and some of the themes that run through the programme, it's a three year degree. So it's obviously there's academic underpinning where we kind of challenge your, your current thinking and how we help to stretch you through the themes on the program. Um, but as I said, it's very much about this applied industry support. No one comes to uni just for uni's sake. Often there's a, a plan in place about where you want to get to. Um, so we need to understand you as an individual. Uh, so you get personalised support with our personal development tutors um, and then connect you through the program. So when you do your second year placement, that you're in a, in a sector of the football industry that is aligned to your own kind of aspirations in terms of where you want to go um, and to make sure that you're you're headed in the right direction. So that's supported by the staff on the programme. But it's also supported by our partners in in the football industry, as I talked about, Argyle Community Trust and Devon FA uh, being the local ones. We have also over the years um, worked out that our students sometimes really like the opportunity to uh, to go to things like Camp America. Um, and use that nine weeks in the summer to get to a cultural experience and a sports experience, um, which really helps their kind of CVs as well. So the, um, we've got a partnership uh, through Futures, which is our employability team, um, where we can send students or students can apply to go with a bursary to work on Camp America to get some experience. Um, and there's also a study abroad option. Um, people on our football degree in the past have gone off to, to study in the States um, for part of their second year, which is an option. Um, we've also got a really, really thorough playing programme. So through our connections with Argyle Community Trust, we've got a full time uh, professional coach that works with our, our football teams um, and we've had lots of success, whether that's in futsal or whether that's in, in football. Um, and we've got a, a full playing programme through the Bucks um, competition in futsal and, and football, as well as local league kind of recreational football as well. Um, so we've got that real close connection between uh, the local professional football club, the, the community arm 
and this is really about recreation in some some ways the local league um, and other ways, ways it's about performance sport trying to trying to win the the leagues that the university are in um, and we've had scholars um, on those programs we've got a real focus as i said on graduate employability um, so what we've done with the program where we've aligned to an organization that most students won't be familiar with or prospective students won't be familiar with uh, but it's called SIMSPA and then a chartered institute for the management of sport and physical activity so not only is the degree aligned through um, uh, through the university and for our for our partners and with the the coach education for the FA um, but we've got industry endorsement through SIMSPA um, so that when you leave you've got these transferable skills in coaching not just seen as a, a narrow person who just coaches football um, and we also do these things with UK coaching and street games. Um, one of our really important aspects of our degree is to understand where students are when they arrive in terms of their own coaching journey and what they might need to support. So my colleague Lee might be able to talk more about this um, at the end, but, but Lee is a coach educator for the FA. Lee, Lee delivers level one, level two um, and UA for B awards um, in the community. And he's also a coach mentor. So we've got a full mentor program through that. Um, so if a student arrives and wants to and has no football coaching qualifications, then then we'll support them to take a level one and a level two. Sometimes students arrive with really good qualifications already and they may have a level one or level two already. And therefore it would be appropriate for them to look to do a level three qualification. So you, the UEFA B award. Um, and then we also offer support through a level one futsal and level two. Uh, potentially are those those um, are more difficult to, to arrange on a, on a national level and all students also get the coaching disabled footballers um, award. So you, you leave with a recognised degree and a, um, recognised FA or UEFA coaching qualifications, which can be really important to future employment. One of the things that students benefit from doing is working alongside their degree. So alongside studying uh, the community trust and other sports organisations employ our students. So people are earning money, getting hands on experience and coaching um, and getting paid for that, gaining that experience um, as they progress through university. Um, what we've done really successfully through the degree and through the kind of the sister degree, which is the, the sports development and coaching degree, is we've been ahead of the game in terms of graduate um, partnerships through employability. So we've got a third year module uh, which is called graduate employability in sport and just in the last few weeks we've been doing online interviews with our students um, they apply essentially for a case study job in one of the sports organizations so with with the uh, football program in particular that was South, Saint Southwest and Argyle Community Trust they went through a process of, of matching up their skills and experiences to the to the CV um, did a presentation and a job interview um, and that has led to online interviews, which was a new thing because of the current situation for students, um, but also the job offers from Southwest Saints and Argyle Community Trust, um, where they've got to know our students through the programme. And, and in particular, Southwest Saints um, and last year, Argyle Community Trust had jobs that didn't go out to wider advert because they'd already seen high quality candidates. So the partnership with, with um, the industry works really well for them as well. Um, so we've had some lots of kind of success uh, since we've been running the programme. We've had uh, Alice who last year got a job um, through the employability module as the Mayflower 400 events officer. Uh, George Roberts worked for Argyle Community Trust for a while and now works for Cornwall FA as a junior football development officer. Ryan Perks is the women and girls development officer at the Community Trust. He graduated last year. Mark Blackwell was just about to complete his degree. He's not he's not even finished yet, but was offered a, a full time position. So he's he's finishing off his degree while starting his full time job. Um, and then we've got students that have gone to the other regional uh, football centres. So Torquay uh, and Craig Butler is a futsal coordinator with Exeter City. Um, so although there might be rivalry between the football teams, that actually in terms of the community trust, there's lots of kind of collaboration between them. Uh, and we've got two students uh, from who graduated last year, uh, Kyle and um, uh, um, and uh, Liam, sorry. Um, and both of those are working in Cornwall now uh, as part of the community trust. So we've got we've got kind of exceptional uh, an exceptional program in so much that we we recruit normally about fifteen to twenty students. So we're we're dealing with small numbers where they get to know lecturers, our employment partners. Um, and we can really work with students, therefore, to kind of tailor their own 
route rather than going to maybe a course where there's 120 students and, and people just don't know each other. The, the thing about margins is that we're quite small. Um, we're, we're really supportive um, and we get to know where people are at in their own careers um, because people are different and therefore the guidance needs to be different. It's not a one size fits all approach to our teaching at all. Um, it's a really good place to come in terms of face to face contact. Um, obviously, with COVID, we, we moved online temporarily um, and we're probably going to have a blended approach to, to teaching in September, depending on how things are. But it's obviously a hands on course. It's a practical course and we'll be back out um, on the AstroTurf on the football pitches um, doing the applied applied aspects as well. So, um, Sally, that's that was that's me. Amazing, thank you, Phil. Um, we also have Dwayne with us from Argyle Community Trust. So, um, Phil, I don't know. I know you've talked a lot about Argyle Community Trust. So, I don't know um, if you had any questions for Dwayne whilst he's on the call with us, or if you wanted to kind of um, ask him anything. Basically, I'm sure Dwayne. If Dwayne can can chat, I'm sure Dwayne can give, give a better overview as well. Dwayne's one of my ex students from uh, a long while ago, um, and now he's second in command at the Community Trust. So, I'm sure Dwayne can probably. Uh, add some insights from a ex student perspective as well as an employer's perspective. Yeah, perfect. And if you'd like to unmute, it'd be great. Yeah, hi, all apologies about the, um, the slight ICT issue to start off the session. So um, yeah, thanks for the introduction, Phil. Just to give those a quick um, whistle stop tour about myself. I was a sport development student uh, and graduated in 2009, but I certainly would have elected for the football development and coaching degree if that was an option um, when I was applying for university. Just to bring the community trust to light a little bit, um, we kind of partner the degree on about four or five different um, strands. The first one, as I'm sure Phil mentioned, uh, myself or my colleagues with subject specialisms will come in and they'll support the degree, bring in some of the academics that Lee, Ryan and Phil um, will bring to life and give it a kind of employability context, how it actually looks out there within the sport development world. Um, the second thing, which again, I'm sure Phil mentioned, is you get kind of career advice and guidance from myself throughout the, through the full three years. So any questions that come up, the beauty of having me around the campus is you can pick my brains, you can ask about job opportunities, um, ideal CPD, potential employment offers, best practice, uh, salary, all those types of questions that maybe you wouldn't want to ask an advisor or a lecturer at Marjons. We'll stroke up quite a, an informal relationship and you can pick my brains about anything about working in the football industry. Similar to Lee, I was also an FA mentor. I've worked at a couple of different professional football clubs uh, and spent some time working for the Wilts FA as well. So, um, you know, pretty well networked in terms of uh, football employment. And again, I'm happy to share that at any point. Um, and then lastly, again, as Phil's mentioned, the beauty of having the football club as an official partner is that uh, you get a chance to get your hands dirty and do some learning whilst working at the pro club. Um, we oversee some of the modules around uh, event management and work placement. And we kind of allude to the fact that the best place for us is probably the biggest sport development employer in the whole of the Southwest. We want to get our future employees from this degree program because we know what we get in. Uh, they've had a chance to learn what we believe to be um, valuable career industry experience and knowledge. And our biggest passion about partnering this degree is being able to get work ready employees when they come to graduate in September. Thanks, Dwayne. That's amazing. It's great to hear about kind of that strong working relationship that you have both the staff and the students at Marjon that you've kept that really strong link. Um, obviously studying previously and kind of now supporting students and hopefully getting them into a great position um, for ready for employment. Um, Lee, I don't know if it's worthwhile us coming across to you um, just to kind of introduce you and say hello. Um, and if you could tell us maybe a little bit more about the, the coaching elements. Yes, absolutely. Um, hello, everyone. So um, Phil's said most of it already in terms of the coach education support that we provide in terms of level ones, level twos, UA for Bs, et cetera. Um, I think just a, a couple of extra things to add in. So Phil mentioned some of the staff right at the start at Marjon, um, but just, just to go in, in a bit more depth. So we've got Chris um, who tutors in Devon, level ones, twos, and is also a current FA coach mentor. We've got Aaron who's currently a Devon UA for B tutor. Um, we've got Ryan who's a former FA tutor for a number of years, and myself who tutors level ones, twos, and UA for B and mentors. So in terms of um, that wider support within industry qualifications, FA qualifications, we feel like we're, we're pretty well networked and, and we understand um, that aspect really well. 
The, the other strong link that we've got is our own grassroots football club. So we've got a marginal grassroots football club that starts from a really young age all the way through to kind of under 18s adults. Um, and we're, we're trying to grow that a little bit more in terms of potentially some inclusion, some disability and some female only programmes. Um, so for students who may not be ready to go out and get paid employment with the likes of Dwayne's organisation, there might be a really good link now for you to gain some hands on experience in a, a voluntary setting first. Um, we also tie some of that into the module, so some of that is compulsory anyway, but we have a number of students who volunteer with those programmes um, away from away from modules, away from the academic experience as well. Thanks, Lee. That's really, really, really interesting. I think voluntary work as well is, is just as vital as normal work experience, I think, when it comes to employment and that sort of thing. So it's great that you've got those connections in place ready to to make sure that um, our students are kind of ready to go. Um, Phil, I'm just going to pop back over to you um, to ask you um, one of the questions that we've had come through, um, which I think we might have covered kind of already with our connections, especially with um, Argyle and things. So um, we've got someone here that is currently playing high level football and they're looking to join um, the football team at Marjon and hopefully finding a club outside of campus. So I think they just want to know about what the opportunities in regards to helping with the coaching side of those teams um, and then also um, how easy is it to find um, kind of playing for a team outside of campus and on campus? Um, it it depends, you know, it sounds like someone's relatively high high performer in that in that question. So if, you know, the football pays money, um, so the football pyramid is the way it is, you know, the, the better player you are, the more likely you are to, to get paid to play, you know. So um, if there's a new person into the area, uh, football managers will um, and people with, uh, uh, you know, that scout talent will be keen to to look. So if someone's performing really well in the in the Bucks teams or things like that and are looking for a team, then we can support that. Um, Lee said about uh, Chris Mitanka, one of our colleagues who's really well networked in the local uh, local league football. Um, so Chris can sign post. We've got ex-students. So Mark Blackwell was one of the students that I talked about. He just, just got a job working for Community Trust. Uh, he's part of Plymouth Parkway, which is a high performing local team. Um, it is all, all about networks really and who you know. So Aaron Kuzak, who's our A-licensed coach, his brother Matt Kuzak is a B-licensed coach, a former Marjan student, has just got the job of managing Plymouth Parkway. Um, so there's, depending on where people are at, um, there, there's opportunity to be paid to play football uh, in Plymouth and the South West as there is elsewhere. Um, and if it's not quite to that standard, um, there, there's obviously uh, lots of kind of recreational football as well. So uh, men don't t tend to be badly catered for in terms of um, playing opportunities. Hopefully that helps a bit. Yeah, thank you, Phil. I think a huge part of that is kind of networking. And I think we've got some really strong links and networks there that hopefully um, means that we can kind of share um, students' abilities and things like that. Um, so it'd be great to get some student input now. So we've got um, Josh is on our on the call with us. He's one of our student ambassadors. Um, so Josh doesn't study football development and coaching. However, he is hugely um, involved in the sports scene at Marjon. So um, Josh, it'd be great to hear kind of your views on sport at Marjon and maybe kind of telling us what it's like to play in a Bucks game on a Wednesday and, and things like that. So handing over to you. Hi everyone. I'm Josh. Um, being a part of you know, the sports team at Marjoram is great. You know, you get a lot more people than you expect coming to watch you. Um, you can pr pretty much participate in any sport that you want to. So me personally, for myself, I play basketball. Um, I play for the Raiders team and I play for the university team as well. So there's, there's certain pathways for me to also develop my own game and, you know, show what I have. And the same thing for football, there's hockey, so there's plenty of other sports that you can participate and join in. Amazing, thank you, Josh. And just while I've got you, what's um what's been your favourite part about studying at Marjon? So going back to kind of the educational side and the academic side, um, mm. what what's it like on Marjon on campus? I know at the moment, um, unfortunately, we're not on campus at the moment, so uh, we might have some people watching that haven't visited us before. So it'd just be great for you to share kind of what it's like studying um, with us and what's been your highlights so far. I'd say one of my one of the best things I like about um, studying and just being at Marjoram is the space, like just the fact that you're always either to get like a classroom that's open or the library's never too packed up or there's always a lecturer that's available to talk to you about, you know, a certain module or a certain task. So the fact that, you know, it's not an overly crowded university, there's always opportunities for you to grasp the things that you don't really grasp in class, makes sense. 
Um, my favourite part about Marjoram, I think just exploring, just going out and just exploring, um, not just the, the campus, but, you know, the whole town itself, you know, because it, it is, the culture is all together, you know, Plymouth, it's, it's a very small town and I mean, once you kind of get your hands around it, I kind of like it. Yeah, I'm a London boy, so sorry. Yeah, I'm a city boy. So. <laughs> That's great. It's, it's quite a small, like, smallish town. Is it? There's a great sense of community, and that yeah. reflects within our campus as well. I think, like you said, there, there's plenty of space to go explore, be it from um, the sports facilities that we've got, which are phenomenal, and also um, the green space around us, being able to see the sea and seeing the moors. Um, thank you, Josh, for your input. That's been amazing. Um, Phil, I am just going to come back to you now, um, just for some questions just about the course again. Um, so I think one of the, the the key questions is kind of how will I be assessed? Um, so, so how is that balanced out? It depends on the module, which um, I suppose an answer, it depends, doesn't sound great. Um, at, at uni, you know, as I said, it's, it is higher education. So there's, there's written work that, that gets done. So people might, it, they might be talking about coaching, but part of the coaching module might be exploring their coaching philosophy and that and how they've arrived at that. Um, so we use written work, whether it's reports, whether it's essays, um, we, some, we use a couple of um, online multi-choice tests, in-class tests. Uh, we obviously have assessment of practical coaching. Um, so on the coaching modules, uh, we don't we don't kind of get people to write an essay just about their coaching. We see it um, and, and they get assessed and supported to develop as a coach. Um, on the event management modules, students are off running an event. So they, they'll plan an event with an employer. Um, they'll deliver that event and then they'll evaluate on that. So there's element of reflective practice. Um, so it's not just about us saying to a student what we we think they could do better. It's about them them kind of owning that. Um, and then there's the there's the applied modules. We've talked about the employability thing where that, that assessment, you know, pretty unique kind of way to be assessed in a, in a job interview. So quite varied, quite applied um, and and deliberately um, innovative in, in some of the things that we do because we've got relatively small numbers. We can do those types of things that are actually time intensive, you know, to do a, a 45 minute interview when you've got 20 odd students is, is doable. If you if you're running a degree program where you've got uh, 200 people on a module, you're not going to stand a chance to do that. So it's, it reflects back to who we are as a as an institution um, and how we work with students. Really, the assessment is aligned to uh, obviously achieving the, the module outcomes and the program outcomes, um, but used developmentally, not just for the, the, the sake of assessment. So hopefully that helps a bit. Yeah, thank you, Phil. I think that shows that there's just that nice balance of kind of practical and theory, but also personal development and improvement there, which is great. Um, we haven't had any further questions come through, so I think I'm just going to wrap up the session now. Um, I'll string it out a little bit just in case any questions do come out um, whilst I am say, um, saying goodbye. So I just want to say thank you to um, Phil and Lee for sharing kind of the course content and what's available and um, kind of how that is broken down. Thank you to Dwayne um, for joining us. Um, it's been great to hear about the connections that we have and the partnerships, and it's great that we've managed to get Dwayne on the call with us today to share these experiences. And thank you for Josh um, for sharing everything from a student perspective, um, even if it's not exactly the right course, but it's still it, it really does link in with our class sizes aren't too large they are quite small um, your tutors are always available and there for you to support you and and get you through your personal development um, so yeah thank you everyone for joining today and hopefully we'll see you all soon bye bye